Are you tired of being overcharged and forced into paying a monthly subscription for your Mac and Windows software? Well, if you are, currently we're having a 50% off discount on all the latest Mac and Windows software, such as AutoCAD, SolidWorks, Photoshop, Microsoft Office, and much more. Our 50% off discount will be ending soon, so be sure to text us, ready to buy, to the number on the screen. Starting pricing for low-end software $100 and starting pricing for high-end software $500. We aim to please, so expect 24-7 technical support, the latest premium software, instant software links delivered to your email, and PayPal Buyer's Protection Guarantee. Alright, this might be a little bit better. Alright, this might be a little better. Let me look in here and see what it's looking like. It might be a little bit better. Let's see what's going on. All right. While everybody's coming back in here on the new stream. All right. How's this looking, guys? I can't see nothing now. All right. All right. This is a little bit better. I think it's a little bit better. No, I can't see you guys in the, um, there we go. All right, much better. All right. There we go. All right, let me let everybody know that I'm live right now. Hold on. Hold on one second. Let me make sure everything is running like it's supposed to run. Hold on one second. Hold on one second. Let me let everybody know I'm live on Twitter. Come on, man. Now. All right. Okay. Now I'm getting slow tweets here. All right, what's up, man? I'm back. I'm back. I'm back, family. I'm back. And I'm going to try to make it do what it do. I'm going to try to make it do what it do, guys. All right. Just clearing some, some settings, issues, and all that stuff now. But I am here, and I'm going to make it pop off. Glad y'all tuning back in. I'm glad y'all sticking with me tonight, going through my, my technical issues here. Yeah. But um, I'm here. I'm here. All right. So everything looks like it's running smooth. Looks like everything is running like it's supposed to run. Good. All right. Hopefully we um, stay where we need to be tonight, man. But I'm glad y'all tuning in, man. Um, again, like I said, I'm out and about um, doing some stuff with the family for the um, weekend, the holiday weekend. The kids are out of school. So, you know, whenever the kids are out of school. I usually do some daddy stuff. I do some stuff with the kids. You know, we got to go somewhere with the family. All right. So just making sure the chat room is good. Shout out to everybody in the chat room. And everybody in the chat room, if you could um, retweet this, that would be absolutely fabulous. That would be wonderful if you can retweet and let everybody know that we're doing our thing here. And um, yeah, I'm still trying to make sure everything is good. There's a little slow thing going on on my end a little bit. But at least I'm not lagging with you guys. I'm trying to look at the chat room and see the chat. And hopefully when I play my video clips, I don't have any issues because I do have quite a few video clips to play, ladies and gentlemen. Happening in, okay. oh, happening in Brooklyn tonight. Though. Like that. I got to play that of the Caribbean Music Award. Anyway, let's get into it. Let's get into it. I'm here. I didn't go to the Beyonce concert, man. Yeah, yeah. I'm not in L.A. right now. You know, um, I'm, I'm out here with the kids doing some stuff. But I mean, shout out to everybody who went to the Beyonce concert. I did want to go. I just, um, I'm out here with the kids doing some stuff. 
All right. So people are going to pile in the room. Um, but yeah, yeah, this was the first Caribbean Music Awards. So let's talk about what we're talking about today. A lot of stuff we're going to get into. A lot of stuff we're going to get into, ladies and gentlemen. What I do want to talk about first. I want to talk about the Caribbean Music Award they just had in Brooklyn, New York. They had the Caribbean, the first annual, this was the first one. The Caribbean Music Awards in Brooklyn, New York. They had it in Brooklyn. Shout out to Brooklyn. All right. They had it in Brooklyn. Shout out to Brooklyn, New York. Shout out to all the artists that, that came through. Shout out to everybody who participated. Um, it looked like it was a great program. Um, my good brother, Mr. Wyclef Jean, was the host of it. And Wyclef is my friend and my brother. Wyclef has been in um, one of my films. He was in 1804. Wyclef has welcomed me to his home. Very good brother. Wyclef is a very good brother. And he would be the great, the, the perfect person to host that. Yeah. A shout out to a, from a real Canadian Jamaican. Shout out to you, my, my Canadian Jamaican brethren. Shout out to you. All right. But yeah, they had the Caribbean Music Award. God damn it, man. I hope you guys can see me good. It, it's. I can't see you guys in the room. Hold on, man. Hold on one second. Man. Because now this thing is giving me glitches and I, I can't see nothing. I can't see you guys. I'm trying to see the family. I'm trying to see you while I'm talking. So let me try some things. I want to see you guys while I'm chopping it up. Let me try something over here. I'm trying to see you all while I'm talking. And the computer's acting real slow and I can't see you. And it's, it's very difficult to hit them trying to correspond with you. All right. So they're doing away with R&B all together. But shout out to Brooklyn. Shout out to New York. I might be in New York again later this week, by the way. I might be in New York because I'm still knocking out some more filming for the new documentary that we're working on. And we've been editing like crazy. Oh, this is going to be a phenomenal piece that we're doing with our documentary, by the way. This is going to be a phenomenal piece that we're doing, man. There's so much good information and uh, we're getting it together. We're getting it together. And um, again, I might have to be in New York later on this week to do some more stuff. So shout out to New York City. Shout out to the New York family. Um, but yeah, they had the first annual Caribbean Music Award. Wycliffe hosted it. There was a lot of Caribbean artists performing and getting awards and... You know, it looked like it was a pretty good thing. Looked like it was a pretty good celebration. Not knocking them. I give them all the props in the world. Hold on, man. Hold on. I'm going to try to um, just look at the chat room for my phone, man. I, I can't. Because everything is running real slow. Man. Hold on one second, man. And I'm going to show a clip of the news report of the Caribbean Music Award. I'm going to show a clip of that in a second. Y'all just give me a, a moment. Let me show a clip of that. And how's my voice? Am I, is everything syncing up correctly? Because now this thing is just making everything run real slow on my computer. All right. All right. You know, bear with me one second. If I got ads and commercials on here. And I cannot see you guys in the chat room. I can't see you guys. And I want to see the family. All right. 
Okay. God damn it, I can't see nothing. Okay, okay hold on. Y'all just rock with me. All right. All right, there it is. Okay, I can see you guys. Okay, stop stopping. Okay, there we go. It's good. Everything is good. Okay. Let me just take this browser off and then I'll just. Okay, there we go. There you go. All right, so I can see y'all. I'm good. No sync. Okay, good. I can see you guys here. I was just, I was on the Safari browser and I couldn't see you guys and there were some issues there. But I see you now, so everything is good. Look like I got a. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's whatever, man. Okay. All right. Okay. All right, so yeah, like I said, so they got the, the Caribbean Music Award. It was popping off in New York. Um, and let me show a news clip of it. Let me show a news clip. The news was giving it props. They were giving them props, and that's okay. That's okay. They, Everybody was doing their thing. All right, let me, let me show a news clip here. Hold on, bear with me. Let me show a news clip of the Caribbean Music Award. Or hold on. Let me show that. And um, this is the first one that they had. There's a lot of people popping up there. Ooh, I didn't know it was Caribbean. They had the singer Maya on there. Maya? I didn't know Maya is Caribbean. What is Maya? Where is her family from? Yeah, I like that. I like that because we get to learn where some of these people are from. All right. I like it. We get to see where some of these folks are from. Let me get this together. Hold on. I got this big ass thing here. All right. Y'all bear with me. Let me throw this on real quick and show the news report. So you got a, had a lot of people up here. Some people, again, I didn't know that were they were even Caribbean. But anyway, let's put that up here. All right, this was the Caribbean Music Award. This is on the news out there in New York. Hold on one second. All right, this is what they had to say. Happening in Brooklyn tonight, the first ever Caribbean Music Awards. There was star power at this event, which featured electrifying performances and award presentations. CBS 2's Alicia Reed has the highlights now from Flatbush. The party started on the red carpet. Grammy Award winner Wyclef Jean and his dancers setting the stage. It's a big movement. This is the first time that the Caribbean has decided to embrace each other. This moment, the Caribbean deserves it. We deserve it. The inaugural Caribbean Music Awards brought some of the biggest names in reggae, dance hall, compa, zouk, and soca music under the same roof. I'm happy that everybody could really come together and unite because that's really all it's about at the end of the day, unity. It was also a reunion for some on the red carpet. Been to a lot of awards, but this belongs to us. The energy is beautiful. The energy is real. Fans getting a glimpse of the stars before they enter the building. A night of glamour, excitement, and Caribbean pride. In addition to numerous awards, reggae legend Barris Hammond honored with the Elite Icon Award for his decades-long contributions to enhancing reggae music. No, he's just great. I've used his songs in movies. A lot of people are really excited to see this um, develop and grow into, into something even crazier and bigger. No better time to celebrate the culture that we all have from all the different islands, but what we have brought to these shows. And I want you to notice something. Everybody's on their P's and Q's. Look how respectable everybody is presenting themselves. I love it. Okay. And how effective we have been as a people. You know, it reverberates back home and it, 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 it sets dreams and goals to all the people, you know. The perfect precursor to the West Indian Day Parade on Monday. One thing we found here tonight, all the folks here were just excited to celebrate fellow artists. In Flatbush, Alicia Reed, CBS 2 News. Okay, so shout out to the Caribbean Music Award. N nothing but love for that. That is all right. Shout out to my brother Wycliffe. Shout out to Maya. I love Maya. I didn't know she was Caribbean. I know um, actor Leon. I think his family's Jamaican. Great actor. Great actor. 
I love how everybody was on their P's and Q's. You notice that? Is Maya is black American? Okay. Okay. If Maya just happened to be there, she was there to support. Okay. I don't know. I don't know what she is. I know Carly Red was there and a few people. A few people. All right. Shout out to everybody. Leon is FBA. I think, from if I'm not mistaken, somebody in his family might be Jamaican. All right. But what you did notice, everybody was on their P's and Q's. Nobody was acting ratchet. All right. Nobody was acting like a degenerate. Everybody was on top of their game. No, no, no. I'm giving props. I'm giving props. Yeah, my connection is less janky. That's good. I'm giving props. That's how you're supposed to do it. Now, with that being said, do not complain when foundational black Americans do events that are centered on foundational black American culture. Okay? That's beautiful what y'all did. So do not complain when we do things and we don't want anybody to drop off their degenerate behavior from the non-FBA sector of society. Because I want y'all to understand, Maya's have Jamaican. Yeah, yeah. A lot of people, when they show up to these events, let me tell you something. When you see certain people show up to some of these Caribbean events or whatever, or Caribbean Day Parade or whatever, many of them are Caribbean. It's just what it is. And a lot of a lot of folks just don't know it. Let's just, yeah, just keep it a buck. A lot of these people, when they show up to these awards, that's how you can tell who they are. They'll show up to these award shows and the Caribbean Day Parade. They ain't just there to get no jerk chicken. Many of these people are going there to support their people, which is fine. All right? But understand, when we are doing Foundation of Black American events, shut the hell up. Don't run around here talking about no damn xenophobia. See, everybody can sit up here and do events for their culture and take pride in their culture. Foundation of Black Americans, we're the only group who are told we shouldn't take pride in our own ethnic group and our own culture. Our culture and us taking pride in it offends everybody. You, you feel me? Whenever we say, hey, we want to have some cultural pride based on our ethnic lineage, and we don't want no riffraff stuff being thrown in misrepresenting us, we're told that we'll use niggas as xenophobic. We're all in these together. No. No, 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 we can be in, to, in it together over there. But right here, sometimes we want to do some things that represents our culture. For example, you had a lot of the love and hip hop people. And let me let me show some stuff. Some of the love and hip hop people at the Caribbean Awards, the, the, the Spice Woman, she was there. Hold on. Hold on. Let me let me see that. Hold on. Hold on. Let me show y'all some of the people that were there. That Spice Lady who's on Love and Hip Hop. All right, let's let's look at some of this stuff. All right, let me let me go to the the board here. All right. So let's look at some of the folks who were there. You had Carly Red. What is Carly Red? I didn't know she was Caribbean. Well, most of the people on Love and Hip Hop are Caribbean. All right. So Carly Red from Love and Hip Hop. What is Carly Red, guys? What's her ethnic background? Because, yeah, I, I'm saying I don't know she was Caribbean, but truth be told, most of those people on Love & Hip Hop are actually Caribbean. You had Spice on there. There's the Spice Lady. Uh, um, a few people. But what is Carly Red? What is, what is her ethnic background, family? Uh, she's uh, Carly's Trinidadian. Okay. All right. Okay. Now, notice now with Love and Hip Hop, see, there's a controversy going on now with Love and Hip Hop, where Erica Mena just got fired, basically, Mona Scott Young, 
and those guys basically under pressure had to quote unquote get rid of her or lay her off for the next season because she called didn't she call Spice a monkey? She she made one of these anti black slurs, right? Carly's from Trinidad. Okay, got it. Okay. Yeah, Mona Scott is Haitian. All right. So Erica said they were up there arguing and fighting. And um, the Erica lady called this woman a monkey. And there was a, a backlash. People on social media was like, hey, that's too much. No, Mona Scott is Haitian. Yeah, Mona Scott is Haitian. But listen. We want them to keep that degenerate stuff that they do on Love & Hip Hop. Keep that over there. You see, they don't do that at the Caribbean Awards. You understand? They don't do that at the Caribbean Awards. On the Caribbean Awards, everybody is going to be on their P's and Q's. Everybody's going to act like they got some damn sense. But when you do Love & Hip Hop, and Hip Hop is our culture, and everybody knows it's our culture, when you do things under the banner of Foundation of Black American Culture, everybody's fighting and calling each other names and acting a damn fool. Ladies and gentlemen, this is why we're doing this documentary, so that we can gatekeep our culture and let people know all of your degenerate behavior that you're dumping on us, we're cleaning that up. We're letting folks know whose culture this is, and we're not going to let people misrepresent our culture. Because when it's under the banner of hip hop, everybody feels like they can take a, a, a crap on everything and wipe their ass with the, the curtains. You, you dig? But at the Caribbean Music Awards, boy, everybody is very respectful Everybody's dressed nice. Everybody's having a good time. It's good, clean, family fun. So they got this thing when they come around us. Hey, these are the trash people. So now we can be trashy. See, that's what I have. I got a problem with a lot of those Latino artists, especially J-Lo. See, J-Lo goes to the, the Black Awards, you know, with, with ass and titties hanging out. But at the Latin Music Awards, oh, everything is very honorable and respectable. No, nah, I'm, I'm tired of people using the black community, the foundation of black American community as their own personal trash heap. You understand? And we have to start calling out some of the, the white execs who allow this stuff. Like the last BET Awards, it was an embarrassment. And I want y'all to understand, they, they had sexy red in the audience looking like America's Next Top Hood Rat. I mean, it was uh, Krishan was up there pregnant, twerking, and she just had her baby on Instagram. Um, you know, they, they throw filth on us. They throw filth on us, and just enough is enough. Enough is enough. So if people are going to have this respectability at these award shows that represents their Caribbean and Latino culture, we're going to have to start making people put respect on our foundation of black American culture. And it starts with us, family. The documentary that we're doing is so long overdue. It's long overdue. We should have been gatekeeping this thing. And man, we got everybody in this thing. We got all of the pioneers, man. And just to hear them talk about the origins of what they do, it's a no one has never sat down with all of the pioneers to really have them break down what motivated them to create um, this worldwide phenomenon, which is hip hop. You understand? We're the first to do it, to get all of them in one spot to really break it down and, and tell the real deal. The real story of hip hop has never been told. We've been hearing lies and then recycled lies and then more additions to the lies being piled on for the last 40 years. Really since 1980, that's when they started doing, what, well, 81, that's when they started doing real big coverage on hip hop, the growth of it because of the, the records that were coming out in the late 70s, early 80s. So they've never, there's never been a real expose 
about the culture that we created as foundational black Americans. Yeah. Didn't get Angie Stone, but I would still like for her to reach out. But we, we, um, there's only a, there's a couple of more interviews that I got to get. A couple of more because we, we're basically done. Yeah, when I when I'm done with this one, because this was gonna be huge. I'm, this is gonna be huge. This is gonna be huge. The next one I do about music, we're gonna cover West Coast hip hop. We're going to get into the history of that. I'm going to get all my West Coast folks together and do something on that. But um, this one, the origin of just hip-hop in general, and we're covering the stuff from the 70s. You, you dig? Because a lot of times people do hip-hop documentaries and they got a bunch of newer artists on there. The whole thing, you, you might have a legend or two in there, but you have mostly newer artists of people who came much later. So the story never gets told. The story never gets told. Yeah. Busy B is in this one. Yes, we Busy B is in ours. You name somebody who's a pioneer, who's a respected pioneer, you name them. They're in it. Name somebody. We got the for real pioneers, not people who came later, not no Johnny come latelys. We got the OGs. We got the first of the first. Yeah. Shout out to Deion Sanders. Shout out to Deion Sanders doing his thing out there in Colorado, which we knew it. And you know, I've been giving Deion props. People were very critical of our brother. And I, I, I've been very supportive of Dion. I said, Dion is going to make it happen. Dion is going to work that thing out. No, no, no. Y'all let Dion cook. Go look at the interview I did with Beehive what, about a year ago. Something like that. Well, even I don't know if it was that. Yeah, probably a year ago. Look up that interview I did with my brother Beehive down in Atlanta. Shout out to my brother Beehive. But yeah, I talked about Dion Sanders and, you know, the criticism he was getting then. I said, no, Dion is about to make it do what it do. Uh -huh. Shout out to Coach Prime making it do what it do. Yeah, Melly Mel, we got Melly Mel in the movie. Yeah, oh yeah. Yep, yeah, we got Melly Mel. Yeah, Mean Gene. I know the story of Mean Gene. Mean Gene was down with Flash. I know the story. I got dude. We all about to learn all the stuff that was going down. Some of the gangs that were being used to protect the jams in the 70s because that was another thing they used um, certain gangs to protect certain areas in the Bronx when they had these parties and at the time the Bronx was very ter territorial so you just couldn't waltz up in somebody's neighborhood you know especially with no damn equipment so we talk about the the gang influence um, the black spades um Oh, there's so many different gangs. There was a gang called the Casanovas that were used. Um, Mario was part of the Black Spades, the Baby Spades. We got some of the Baby Spades in the. Uh, we got some of the Zulu Kings. Uh, you know, it's it's a phenomenal piece we're doing, man. We're breaking this thing down. The movie is gonna be phenomenal, man. They, you guys are about to get the real deal in this movie. Yeah. You guys are going to get the real deal. Somebody said the real Roxanne stop. <laughs> no, we're talking about people who were there in the beginning. Yeah. We're talking about the people who were there in the beginning. No, I'm not giving too much away. No, y'all got to see it. No, 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 no. Y'all got to see this. Y'all got to see this. Y'all going to see it. Y'all, y'all got to see it. But we got a lot of folks in here. But yeah, like I said, I'm giving props to the Caribbean Music Awards, man. Nothing but love and nothing but props to them for doing their thing out there. We don't want any criticism of foundational black Americans doing our thing. So when we got, I'm, I'm letting y'all know now because people, they're already trying to get in front of the movie we're doing by calling it hate. Yeah, nobody's, you haven't seen one frame of the movie, so nobody know what we're talking about. But there are some people who are trying to get in front of it because they know the lies are going to stop. We're going to crush a lot of lies and we're going to talk about um, what foundational black Americans 
um, did to create hip hop, and we're going to prove unequivocally that this is a 100% foundational black American culture. Now, here's the thing. Now, people, you got some people out here who are being very arrogant about things that they consider their culture. You got people out here telling um, black folks, foundational black Americans, leave their carnival alone. You know, the, the, the carnival celebrations are coming up and you got some non-FBA folks living over here telling us, hey, why don't we leave their, their culture alone? Like this woman here. This woman has been on TikTok and she's living in the U.S., which is very ironic, but telling us, hold on, this is what she got to tell us about her carnival. Hold on. We need to start gatekeeping carnival. There is no reason on this earth for anybody that's not from the Caribbean to be at carnival. And I don't care how y'all feel on the subject. Carnival is starting to get too commercialized for me. Okay. She can commercialize them damn edges. The tether women, boy, they cannot lay edges for nothing. Yeah, I know. I love Jada Waiter. But what the fuck do her and her American friends know about carnival? You're not from the Caribbean. You don't know the music. You don't know the people. You don't know the food. You don't know the culture. What are you doing at Carnival? A lot of y'all look at Carnival as just a way to dress skimpy and go outside and shake your ass. And the fact that y'all reduce our culture to... Ain't that what it is? Hold on. Wait a minute. Ain't that what it is? Ain't that what y'all do? That's what y'all do. Y'all dress skimpy, shake your ass, and be twerking on white folks. But then tell us, hey, don't touch your culture. All y'all do is go out there and twerk on police and, and, and do all types of weird stuff. But okay, you go off, sis. Go off with you and them unlaid edges. It's such bullshit just because you want to post on Instagram. And then I'm confused because a lot of y'all that are trying to talk down, y'all come from cultures that are disrespected in every which corner of this earth. So where do you find the space to talk about what Caribbean people are doing? I feel like you need to be either a citizen of a Caribbean island or eligible for citizenship on a Caribbean island to be at Carnival, period. I don't care. Okay, ma'am, if you need to really concern yourself about the inflicted edges, ma'am, it it's the edges for me. It's the edges for me. Okay. Okay. Boy, they, these people kill me. Uh, Ma'am, nobody's trying to claim the, uh, the ratchet carnival. I mean, knock yourself out, but ma'am, get over yourself. Yeah, they, we're not trying to go out there and watch y'all musty, twerking, eh, it's whatever. You know, but you over here, what we and what we built, telling us not to touch your shit. Okay, fine, ma'am, fine. If we're gonna go that route, stay the hell away from Juneteenth. You see, because here's the thing: they love telling us don't be taking over Carnival and all of that stuff. But the minute there's some type of Juneteenth money on the table. Y'all the first ones in line to get it. Y'all the first ones in line trying to get some Juneteenth money or some Juneteenth scholarship. And Juneteenth has nothing to do with you. Juneteenth has everything to do with foundational black American culture. Okay? The minute we got a Juneteenth check popping, all of a sudden you find somebody to help you lay your edges down and you're trying to get a damn Juneteenth check. Okay, so y'all don't want to play that game. Y'all don't want to play that game at all. All right. People start talking real funny. Yeah. And speaking of edges, I saw something where they were, they were talking about the art of laying edges. The whole laying your edges style came from um, Latinos. They start saying that came from Latino women in the 1980s. The whole thing about laying your edges, they're trying to say that FBA sisters got laying edges from Latinas in the 80s. 
if y'all don't stop. Family, foundational black Americans have been laying their edges at least since the 1920s. You understand that? Y'all, uh, y'all about a hundred years too late. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. FBA sisters been doing that with the baby hair and you know the the baby hair style. Yeah, right. Yeah, they've been claiming that. Yeah, that's another thing they've been claiming. I didn't. There's a lot of little shit they be claiming that y'all don't know about. All right. Yeah, they're trying to say they that's the new thing they try to say that we've been getting stuff from them, like a lot of b-boying and stuff and yeah, laying edges that comes from the Latina girls from the 80s. Bull crap. Yeah, Josephine Baker. Hold on. Look at the you know, I'm I'm pulling this up now. Hold on one second. One second. Yeah, hold on. Let me pull up this thing with our sister our FBA sister Josephine Baker. All right. This is Josephine Baker, like in the 1920s, with the edges laid. Our FBA sisters knew how to lay some damn edges. Our sisters been doing that. With the finger waves, yeah. Oh no, somebody said the 60s. No, brother, go back to the 20s, dude. This is from the 1920s. This is our FBA sister, uh, Josephine Baker, the legend. Yeah, we been doing that. We've been getting that in. Man. So, yeah, yeah, we, we got to, yeah, say Betty Boob had her hair laid, her edges laid. And that's where they were getting it from. They were getting it from the sisters. They were getting those hairstyles from the sisters back then. Huh? Yeah, Josephine was the queen of the jazz age. Real talk. Oh, yeah, FBA women created laying the edges. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we got we to gotta check folks when they start trying to remix history. Huh? Folks try to remix history on us. We got to check that stuff. Oh, yeah, yeah. Betty Boop was based on a black woman. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That whole thing. All those dances. And we talk about this in the documentary, too. All those dances, not just the hip-hop dances, I mean, almost every dance craze came from us. And, you know, Betty Boot would be doing all of those FBA dances. Um, uh, it, it, it's deep, man. It's deep. It's hella deep. And I, I, I don't want to spoil it. It's so much stuff we're going to put in the film. Oh, yeah. So yeah, yeah, we, we got to, this is up to us to really explain the culture and keep the history and the culture alive. We have to let people know what it is. We got to let folks know this is what it's going to be. This is what it is. Shout out to our non-FBA family. We still got love for you. We still here. We, we still rock with you. But you know, when when some folks from your side of the fence want to talk greasy, you know, we got we to gotta holler at them. We got to holler at him a little bit. Um, I saw um, Robert F. Kennedy. Robert Was it Robert Kennedy? One of those Kennedys. Um, I think he was on The Breakfast Club. And he's been on a couple of other media outlets. Talking about um, reparations. My sister Tesla. Shout out to Tesla. Tesla hollered at him about you know reparations. And um, Kennedy. You know He's from the Kennedy family. And he, he kind of starts explaining. Now he's big on the back. He actually called me before. About a year or so ago, he we, we had a conversation on the phone about some things. He wanted me to be a part of some project. I forgot what it was. I didn't have time. But we, we had a conversation. I didn't know what his views were on reparations. If I had known what his views were on reparations, I would have hollered at him about that when I spoke to him. Yeah, RFK Jr., yeah. So, you know, he talks a good game until it gets to reparations. All right? He, he talks a good game right until, and, and a lot of these folks talk a good game 
they seem down until you start talking about reparations then they'll flip yeah he ain't he ain't for cash reparations uh what's that other lady um the the anti-racism lady what's her name yo what's the lady's name the little short white lady who does the blue eye brown eye test i'm having a brain fart what's her name family um y'all throw that lady's name at me i can't think of it right now what's that lady's name y'all know who i'm talking about yeah i did i talked to him on the phone before yeah yeah, we had a phone call. We had a, a phone conversation. Yes, yes. Yeah. Jane Elliott. Yes. Yes, Jane Elliott. Jane Elliott. Now, Jane talks a good game. Right until you talk about reparations, she's like, oh, no reparations, though. Yeah, Jane Elliott will talk a good game, too. That's why I kind of stopped rocking with her stuff. That's why I stopped rocking with her stuff. But listen, so RFK was on the Breakfast Club and he was like, no, I'm not for cash reparations. Um, no, not cash reparations. No, 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 because, um, and he gave some old splaining excuse. Well, um, what, did, what was his excuse? It was some splaining. Well, the, the Congress and everybody has to go along with it and that's going to be hard for everybody to go along with it. And... But I do, you know, I don't say cash reparations. It shouldn't be direct cash, but it should be programs like education programs, um, business development programs. And let me tell y'all something, family. Whoops, whoops, whoops. Whenever they start talking about reparations to be programs, I'm telling you, family, they know that's going to be a trick bag. Whenever they start talking about reparations should be some kind of program, they'll give the money to some kind of um, education or anti-racism program. They already know that it's going to be booby-trapped. All right? Yeah, and all that. Everybody went through slavery. No, they didn't. Nobody went through what we went through as Foundation of Black Americans. Nobody was Jim Crow the way we were. Nobody's children were sold into slavery like ours. Nobody was, no group of people were designated to be born into slavery generationally where you can't get out. No group of people were um, hunted by human eating dogs that was state sanctioned. They had dogs that were trained and, and cultivated to eat us. They had nigger dogs. They would bring in those Cuban bloodhounds called Dogo Cubanos, look that up, that were trained to eat black flesh. They would train these dogs to sniff out the melanin in our blood and eat us and kill us. And when slavery was over, this is how those dogs depended on black flesh. When slavery was over, when you can no longer hunt black folks, the dog breed died off. The Dogo Cubano, that dog breed is extinct now because of slavery being abolished. Because slavery was abolished, the dog breed died out. Because you couldn't, it, it was just, they made it illegal to eat for your dogs to eat black people. Look up Dogo Cubano. Yeah. Nobody had that stuff happen to him, so we're not going to play that game. But let me tell you something. They understand the trick bag of it. They know that it's going to be booby-trapped. If it goes through any kind of program where it's not direct payments, it can be booby-trapped left and right. And I explained the other day how a lot of these Racial equality set-aside programs are so booby-trapped. I'm telling you because we try to get grants for the museum and these things are so booby-trapped and rigged. First of all, the people, they, they create some kind of little um, commission or a little committee that they put nothing but non-FBAs and non-black people on there so they control where the money is going to be distributed. That's one. And then two, they create these CEI programs where you have to give a grading system on which nonprofit they give the money to will be prioritized. 
and they make the prioritization in the, the grading system based on how many LGBT people they got in there. So everybody has to skim off the damn money. Uh, you, you understand what I'm saying? They set these programs up so everybody can skim off of it and we really don't even get nothing. So we don't, they don't tell you that we don't really get anything. And I'm telling you from experience, we have a black museum in a black neighborhood with black artifacts. We should be getting all of the black money and the minority coalition money or whatever. We don't get a dime from the city, the state, or the federal government. We don't get anything. All of these billions of dollars in grant money, it has to go through all these other groups and they skim, dude. I'm telling you, they rig this thing where they skim the hell out of it. And by the time we're, we're hitting people up like, hey, where's some stuff for us? Y'all got these racial equity programs. And then they start sending us letters like, ah, man, yeah, our budget is exhausted. But yeah, apply next year, though, guys. What you mean it's, it's, it's exhausted? Where'd the money go? And all of these, and then you look and see who they papered up. It's the rainbow this and the trans lives matter that, and the um, um, illegal immigrant organizations, they rig the hell out of this stuff, man. Dogo Cubano, Dogo Cubano. That's the dog breed, Dogo Cubano. Yeah? Yeah, so they'll, they'll use black folks and say, hey, look at how these black people are treated. Oh my God. They're treated horribly. So give our organization some money. And what we're going to do, um, we're going to give money for racial justice to help minorities. See, this is why the language got to be correct every time. Because they'll put a black face up there and then say, we got to get some minority equity. Oh, we got to have some incentives for minorities. And then when we're black folks are looking at the, the Democrats and the Republicans or whoever and saying, hey, man, why don't y'all... We, we ain't got no money. We got all these homeless black people out here, man. What's up with some programs? Some of these programs that's going to help some of these folks out. Hey, man, look at what we've done for you guys. We gave some money to um, the Minority Coalition. We gave some money to the Racial Justice Coalition. Right after George Floyd. I mean, look at all of these things that we've given so you can't say we didn't give anything to the black community. Look at all of these programs. Um, these are not for the black community. We have to call them out on that, family. I'm telling you from experience, that money never trickles down to us. And I'm looking at these organizations dealing with them. They are running a scam on us, dude. These people hold us up and show us as abused. And then they skim all the money for themselves. The money goes to white, Asian, Latino, and white LGBT people. I'm telling you this is what they're doing, dude. It's a big old con. So whenever they start talking about we're going to give some programs, some no, no, reparations is going to be for some programs. and some. That's a con game. Stop them in their tracks. That's a con game. Yeah. So we got to start talking about what we are going to get as foundational black Americans. And not be ashamed of it because we're supposed to get stuff. We are taxpayers. And um, another thing, what we're not going to do, we're not going to fall for the what I call the chief Alfred Sam scams no more because people were upset with me for I, I put up a post about um, Akon. You know, Akon is going out here again and he's doing the Wakanda timeshare package thing. And let me let me play this clip of Akon. All right, let me play this clip. And there's some people who were kind of co-signing, you know, a lot of people are disagreeing, but there's some people who are all low-key kind of co-signing some of this stuff. And most of us are just not buying the Wakanda um, they, um, timeshare package. We're just not buying it no more, man. So this is Akon doing the the pitch he's been doing this pitch a lot telling 
They got this thing where they love coming to us, telling us that we need to go over to invest in Africa. Okay, here's Akon with the Wakanda timeshare pitch again. Here it is. He's been pitching this. Hold on. And it's the holy grail for your freedom. Like, if Americans, African Americans specifically, don't see that investing in Africa changes everything for you, I mean, all the way down to generational wealth. Like, it's in a, Africa's in a position where if um, African Americans take position now, you guys, every single African American in America would be a millionaire. Without even thinking twice, because there's not, there's nothing that's not needed over there. So you guys come with the discipline, you come with the knowledge, you come with the resources, and then what you've created just for developing America, nothing can happen really in America without us. Just think about everything that creates so- Us? Okay, Where, where's this us coming from? So much revenue for America, from sports, to entertainment, to fashion, to medicine. I mean, you name it. We're, in, we're, we're leading in every single sector. We? When, when did he start speaking French? Okay. Like us. Just imagine if we all just decided to just take all. Okay, what's all that we and us? Okay, Akon. Where, where's that we and us stuff coming from, brother? Um, all that we and us. Um, okay. Akon, brother. And, and folks, yeah, man, we, we're just not buying the Wakanda timeshare package, man come with the resources no no y'all need to come up with the re no come on but no we're not we're not doing that no more and yeah y'all can come over here with the resources no <laughs> i'm sorry and then where y'all negroes because there's some some other Negroes are like, Akon right. All right, why aren't you over there then? All right. No, no, let's get to the nitty damn gritty. All y'all people, anybody who sits up here, Akon telling the truth. Why aren't you over there making it pop off then? How come nobody's showing and proving? We've been hearing this pitch for 120 years. Chief Alfred Sam started that stuff. Who, dude who came over from um, what would become Ghana, came over to Oklahoma running that con game and a bunch of black folks lost their money. They've been running that. Ain't nobody got it popping like that over there in a hundred and something years. Nobody has it popping like that. Man, let's just keep it a buck. This is just facts. This is just facts. It's just nobody's done it. Why aren't y'all doing it? And let me say this. Notice that pitch is only for foundational black Americans. You notice that? They come over pitching that to foundational black Americans. Why are they not pitching that to the African immigrants that's here already? You notice that? Notice they don't go to the African immigrants, first, second, third, fourth generation, they don't go to the African immigrants and say, hey, since you immigrated here, you got some resources here, um, and you most likely have dual citizenship because a lot of immigrants from these countries, they do have dual citizenship. Notice they don't go to the immigrant class and say, hey, why don't you bring your resources over here? You know why they don't do that? You know why they don't go to the immigrants who would be easier to go over there and it would be easier to have them come over and incentivize them? They already have dual citizenship. You understand? It would be very easy for that pitch to go to the immigrants who are here, but they never go to the immigrants. You know why? Because the immigrants know the scam already. The immigrants already know. The immigrants are like, hey, my cousins and my uncles and my granddad is over there. I know how much them niggas be scamming. I ain't with it. You know they ain't with it. They know you conning. They know your ass. They're your family. They know. They know the scammy uncle that's over there in Nigeria. They know the con artist granddad over there in Uganda. They already know the scam. 
They know. That's why you don't go to them. They know. Y'all try to bring that bullshit to us. And guess what? We know. We know too. Yeah? No, 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 no. Y'all not going to get us over there with that con game. Y'all not going to get us over there with that con game. Who's wait, who is this nigga talking about my, my beautiful teeth? Oh, who is this nigga? There's a dude in here talking about my teeth. Yeah, my teeth are beautiful. What's wrong with this nigga? You hating on how beautiful my teeth is, nigga? Nigga, I can't help because, nigga, your teeth look like handlebars. All right, don't get mad at me. This nigga's mad because I got a, a nice set of teeth. This nigga hating. All right, nigga. This must be one of them gap mouth niggas. Get your weight up and get your teeth together, nigga. In my mouth, hating on my beautiful teeth. What kind of shit is that? Must be a tether. Uh, yeah, nigga looking at my mouth, hating. Look at that nigga teeth. That nigga must have some veneers or some shit. What kind of hating shit is that? <laughs> nigga, get your mouth together. One of them old niggas who snag a tooth. Never got his mouth fixed. <laughs> nigga got uh, chipped teeth with butter on them. Nigga, stop it. Nigga, don't don't get mad at me, nigga, because your teeth look like corn niblets. <laughs> oh my goodness! But but back to what I'm saying. <laughs> but like I said, man, uh, uh, they come to us with this pitch, trying to run this game on us. This is why they don't like us um, appreciating our foundational Black American culture. Because they try to play on us um, having a sentimental attachment to a long lost African um, um, culture. And that doesn't exist. I mean, the, the, the countries that we lived in when we were in Africa eons ago, those countries doesn't, they don't even exist. And we are relishing in our foundational black American culture and we're getting more stuff done. So, they see where we're going, so now they like, hey, y'all got it. We need y'all back on board. I, I don't want to hear about all of this thing, all of this stuff that's popping over there. We don't want to go over there and, and get colonized with your ass. Let's keep it above. Because when they start talking about, well, China's over here investing and all of these people over here investing, no, they're not investing, they're colonizing you. You guys are over there getting colonized. And we know it. You over there getting colonized, family. You're getting colonized by the Asians and the white people still. You dig? And we're not going over there for finesse. We can't even get regular dual citizenship, which costs no money. So now we're not going to go over there dropping off a bag. No, we're not going to do that because we see some of your representatives and their anti-FBA rhetoric. And also, we're not going to go over there and it's, we, we've, we've done that before. We've seen the trick bags before. We, we're just not going to, we, we're good. We're good. We, we're good here. Don't sit here and talk about y'all over here dealing with all the racism. The white man ain't going to let y'all have nothing. Nigga, family, y'all African brothers and sisters, please stop. First of all, there, uh, there has to be what? How many United States military bases are all over Africa? Oh, let, let's get, let's get to the nitty gritty and let's talk real. Um, ain't there about what nineteen twenty? If I'm not mistaken, there are about nineteen or twenty U.S. military bases all over Africa. All right, the U.S. has uh, dozens, a couple of dozen bases over there. The French got some bases over there. They got military um, military installations over there. I know in Djibouti, the French military is still over there. The the Western powers got military bases all over Africa, dude. And y'all sit up and let these folks come over. Yeah. They got 37. Okay, damn. Okay, I'm thinking about 19. J yeah, Djibouti had one. I know they, uh, they, they got a white French general who's running that over there. They, the white supremacists got y'all surrounded over there, dude. No, no, we're not going to get away from racism by going there. We're going to run right smack dab into it. 
Russia got bases over there. Dude, they got European military bases all over there. The Chinese are getting bases over there now. The Chinese are taking over some of your transportation ports and, and trade routes. Don't, 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 guys. Don't run this game. We, we ain't buying it. Y'all not really running things over there like that. Because you're too off code. All these other groups are... No, no. What y'all want... Y'all need a... Let me keep it a buck. I don't want to be mean-spirited. But y'all see you're being colonized. You know good and well you're being colonized. They got the military installations all over there. You ain't going to fight them. So you need somebody to finesse. You can't finesse the French. You can't finesse the Asians because they set up boundaries and walls where you can't get to them. So Japan got a base over there. Yeah. All of the East and West, and they got all of these people setting up shop over there. So y'all need somebody to finesse. So they want us to come over there so they can get some finessing going on. Man, let me tell you something. We, I, now I've shown videos of black folks over there buying property, and they'll just go over there and take the black people's property and have the police standing out there while people in the neighborhoods are just looting the, the furniture and everything out the house. I've showed clips of that. I've shown clips of black folks, FBA is going over there and just their stuff getting robbed and pillaged. Okay? Let's keep it a bug, man. Let's just tell the truth. And I'm not even hating because you got people who be like, nigga, you meant he didn't call us. I thought you loved us. I ain't got no problem with nobody nowhere. But what I'm not going to do, I'm not going to lie to my FBA family. That's what I'm not going to do. I'm not about to lie to the FBA family and then have them get set up for a trick bag because their sisters, there's some sisters who got killed over there in Ghana, remember? Some sisters from Detroit, somebody killed them and tried to take their property. I did not try, I think they did take their property. Some sisters bought some property and they killed them sisters. You understand? So there's some weirdo ass stuff going on over there, dude. And there's a lot of this undermining FBA hate. Yeah. That's just what it is. So I'm not going to send my family over there to, to get caught up in no trick bag um, by trying to sell a Wakanda package because it ain't like that over there, man. And we're good over here. We're good. Y'all, y'all, look, my African brothers and sisters, and much love to you guys, y'all just have to get rid of the tribalism and y'all got to put in your own work. We ain't about to go over there and put in work for you and then y'all turn around and start finessing us. We ain't going for that no more. I, I'm not. I'm not doing the Wakanda package. I'm just not doing it. Yeah, because we know what goes down over there. We know what it is. Hold on. I'm not going over there to this. We. I'm not going over there to to sambos and zaddy worshippers. This is what y'all got over there. No, I'm good. Y'all cut our throat, and when white folks show up, y'all boy, y'all. Pampering them. Hold on. Hold on. Mm -hmm. Well, y'all rolled out the red carpet for Zaddy. Hey, you making breakfast in bed? Babe, that's not what I meant by breakfast in bed. You, you tell me it, you want breakfast in bed. You make it, and then you bring the breakfast to bed. You don't make the breakfast literally in the bed. Thank you. Time to feed your queen. Hmm. What? Okay, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm good. I'm good. I'm I'm not trying to go over there with a bunch of damn zaddy worshippers. No, I'm good. Don't don't sell it to me. We know what your get down is. Nah. Them zaddy worshippers over there, nah. <laughs> no, I'm good. No, I'm good. You know, yo, yo, these folks, some of y'all be having disdain for us, but love boy, Zaddy has got, where's this, where's this post I put of this woman right here? This, this woman right here, this woman right here, who's from one of them African countries, hold on, who got, they be having all the smoke for us. Hold on, where's this thing? Please, and a beg means please in Nigerian. Please, can these American artists leave our Afro beats alone? Y'all ruin it every time. 
Okay, this woman's talking about we we ruin Afro beats. <laughs> Can we, meaning Foundation of Black Americans, leave their Afro beats alone? When y'all got Afro beats from a Foundation of Black American artist, but it's okay. Y'all got it from Foundation of Black American artist, but whatever. All right, so this is same woman talking about leave their Afro beats alone, but right here, this is her with a white man choking her around the neck, talking about, I love white boys. All right? A white man is choking her around her neck, and she's sitting here, I love white boys, and I'm supposed to go, and we're supposed to go over there and drop a bag? You can go to hell. Yeah, I'm good. Y'all think we about to go over there and drop a bag to some of these zaddy worshiping crooked wig wearing bedwinches? Really? Oh yeah, so Burna Boy, yeah. Burna Boy only sold twenty one thousand records. When is that? They've been promoting Burna Boy left and right. Damn, Burna. Y'all been sitting there promoting nigga, we done sold damn near more root work than that. Just to put it in perspective. We done sold damn near more root work than that. Man. But shout out to Burnham Boy. God bless him. Hopefully hope he's gonna be alright. Lord. Boy, these people are real funny style when it comes to us, boy. Man, man, man. But yeah, we're just not buying the reparations package. I mean not the not I mean the, the Wakanda timeshare package. We're just not buying that. We're not buying that at all. Did y'all see the thing I did on Revolt TV, by the way? Um, I did an interview with Revolt TV. And um, we're talking about um, blacks and Latinos being allies or something like that. And they had some Latino scholars on there. And, you know, I was breaking it down. Because, see, people see where we we going with ours right now. People see that, you know, we're we're, we're making our thing about us, man. Our FBA um, lineage, we're putting that on the forefront. And a lot of folks depended on this minority coalition. They've been depending on us upholding this minority coalition. Yeah, a lot of people like that interview. It's on my my channel. I'll put it on my channel. I want y'all to look at that and... Uh, they, they did cut some of my stuff out because I was going in even harder. So the whole argument was basically the, the woman, and she, they were respectful. The, the, the Latina scholar was trying to give the impression that, well, a lot of Afro-Latinos and a lot of Latinos go through the same type of racism um, and they have to deal with white supremacy so we all should join together. And I'm like, hell no. Because the problem is we have to deal with some of that off-brand white supremacy from the Latino community because you have too many in the Latino community who identify as white and they want to be like the Anglo white supremacists. So we can't sit here and have this whole minority coalition. We have to draw a line in the sand as foundational black Americans and protect ourselves first. And the whole thing, well, we all struggle and we all, no... Nah. No, because y'all sit here and classify yourselves as white. You look at your paperwork and y'all be sitting here classifying yourself as white. Yeah, I, I spoke on LULAC and they cut that out actually. I spoke on LULAC. You had organizations like LULAC who fought to get classified as white. They fought for Latinos to be classified as white. And I don't want to hear about no Afro-Latinos because the dark ones are the worst ones. Um, um, Enrique, Terrio. He sat here and, and became the one of the head people or the front persons for the Proud Boys, for white supremacist groups. These Latino organizations don't speak out on them. These Latino organizations never spoke out on Zimmerman. They never spoke out on Yanez. They don't speak out on Nick Fuentes. I, I had to let her know, hey, y'all got a lot of stuff going on over here. Y'all don't say nothing about these dudes joining these damn white supremacist groups, so don't come to us talking about some damn coalition and you haven't coalesced against these people within your community joining white supremacist groups. So don't don't come to us and, and wonder why we're circling our wagons and then we're looking at us. Yeah, the L.A. City Council talking crazy. Yeah? 
And I start breaking down that metal la la rasa. See, they think we don't know about that stuff. They won't say nothing if you don't say nothing. You think? No, no, no. We're, we're circling our wagons right now. Yeah, we're circling our wagons right, right now. But yeah, that metal law, yeah, that improve the race stuff. Yeah, they think that that's like a little secret in their community that they think we don't know about. And let me tell you something. That whole blood quantum thing, that came out of Spanish culture. Spanish culture is very interesting. And what's, what's interesting, Spanish culture, they were the first Europeans to have that blood quantum, that so-called purity of blood thing. And I talk about that in my book, Foundational Black American Race Beta. Go get my book, Foundational Black American Race Beta. But that whole meta la 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 sa, better the race by whitening up. Let me tell you something. That comes from that old Spanish arist aristocrat culture. And we could learn from that. See, that was a gift and curse to Spain. Spain, they were the first one, well, not, well, they were on this blood purity thing when they were getting the Moors and some of the, the darker Jews out of Spain. They were on this, we can't mix with them. We got to keep the Christian blood. We got to kind of keep the blood pure. So what happened, they got into some of the royal families in Spain. They got into some real aggressive inbreeding in order to keep their so-called royal bloodlines pure. And we got to understand how this is the lesson for white supremacy as well. Because as our brother Neely Fuller says, white supremacy is based on the royalist system, meaning that a certain group of people with a certain bloodline, they are considered royalty, they can do no wrong, they can do whatever, and they are segregated where they kind of inbreed with each other to keep the bloodline a certain way. That's what white supremacy is. Now there's a gift and curse to that for them. They do get a lot of power and benefits from it. But what happens is the inbreeding takes them out. That's why Spain fell off. You want to know why Spain fell off as a superpower? Because Spain got very powerful very quickly because of those bloodlines interbreeding with each other and they bred themselves um, out of power because their bloodline became so inbred, it became contaminated. You understand? When you inbreed, you create a bunch of congenital disorders that gets you messed up in the game. Spain was big on that. When Spain got the Moors out, you had Isabella, Queen Isabella, and um, Ferdinand, um, Castile and Aragon. They got those two kingdoms together. From what I, th I think Ferdinand and um, um, Isabella were cousins too. So they got together, married each other, meshed those two powerful kingdoms together, and they were able to get the Moors out. So they were like, hey, we're on to something. So let's keep this thing going. Let's keep these bloodlines popping. So you had a powerful family in Spain called the Habsburgs, the Habsburgs royal family. There were, I think there was a German line and the Spanish line. Yeah, they got the Habsburg jaw. They started interbreeding so much, they got this real big deformed face. You know, they, they got this big Natalie Nunn jaw called the Habsburg jaw. You also... You know, people talk about Natalie Nunn's jaw, how big her chin is. There's a name for that. It's called the Habsburg chin. Like my, my brother Jay Leno, and I love Jay Leno because I work with Jay Leno on The Tonight Show. But Jay Leno has one of those big chins. They call that the Habsburg chin or the Habsburg jaw. And they got that from inbreeding with each other. So the Habsburgs, boy, they were aggressively in Spain interbreeding with each other heavy heavy i mean first cousins and nieces and nephews and uncles and aunts and they were inbreeding trying to keep that wealth in the bloodline and they got very wealthy the spanish were conquering remember they were some of the first 
um, world conquerors, the Spanish. Now, the thing is, when you inbreed, if you have a genetic deficiency and you breed with somebody who's outside of your family, usually your genetic deficiency will get diluted and it won't go through the kid. Most likely it won't. If you're dealing with somebody who's outside of the family who does not have the same genetic deficiency. But if you have a genetic deficiency and you marry somebody in your family, most likely the family has the similar genetic deficiency so it becomes compounded. So they were doing that aggressively and they were trying to hold on to power by keeping those genetic bloodlines inbred. And a lot of these rich families do that. The Rothschilds do that majorly. They're, they're a very powerful, wealthy family. They keep a lot of wealth in their family by marrying cousins. The British royal family, some of them are into that. Elizabeth and Prince Philip, they're cousins, I think, right? Where are my European, where are my UK people? Um, Queen Elizabeth and her dude, Prince Philip, weren't they like first or second cousins? I know it was something like that, right? Where are my UK people? So yeah, some of the British family, they're into that stuff too. That's probably why Prince Harry was like, let me go get this black woman so I can get a whole different bloodline going on. You understand? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Elizabeth and, and, and Philip were cousins. Right. But going back to the Habsburgs, they were sitting up here inbreeding so much, it got so bad, the last of the, the Habsburg line, they got um, the, the last powerful Habsburg king in Spain was um, Charles II. And Charles II, he had that big ass chin. He had the Habsburg chin. His face was kind of deformed. He had a, had a tongue. His tongue was too big. He was so inbred. Poor little fella. He was so toe up. He was a mess. And the, the, the paintings of him, they even try to clean that up because his little body was janky, but they would never really depict it in the paintings. They would kind of try to put a little shape on him so he wouldn't look so bad in the paintings, but he was toe up. He couldn't barely talk. His tongue was too big. His jaw had gotten so big. When he was born, he was like half a hermaphrodite. They couldn't tell if he was a boy or a girl. Um, he had herpes sores on his face, chicken pox, measles. Little fellow was toe up. He was a mess. He was impotent. So he couldn't produce an heir. So that, the Habsburg line died with him, or the, the Spanish side. The Spanish side died with him, and when he died, because there was no heir to the Habsburg throne, they had the war of the Spanish secession where they were fighting over the Spanish wealth, and um, I think they had to, um, the French installed one of their folks in there. It, it was deep. It's real deep. Yeah, he was a, his ass was a mess. He died at um, 39 or something like that. Oh, his, his little ass was toe up. Yeah, he was he was a mess. <laughs> you know, and don't let them run that superior gene stuff on you. You know, he he was toe up. Yeah. And that's what was going on with the white supremacists now. Y'all want y'all to understand this. The white supremacists because they are treating systematic white supremacy like a royalty like the royalist system. They segregate people classified as white in these enclaves. And then in some of these little small towns, that's why you see in these trailer parks, these people be out here laying up with their cousins. You know what I'm saying? They be out here sleeping with their cousins. And you have you been, you go to middle America, you see some weird looking people. You go to middle America, you see some weirdos, dude. And a lot of these people in the dominant society, you know, there's a lot of inbreeding going on, and these people are dying off because of um, congenital disorders and neurological diseases. Yeah, West Virginia, places like that, and um, a lot of their genetics are very weak. Remember, I, and they don't talk about a lot of stuff that goes on. Remember out there in uh, Maryland some years ago, and I've always brought this story up, there was some kind of airborne disease that was only attacking the white people. 
it was an airborne disease out there in Maryland. And the disease would only attack white people. It wouldn't hit black people. Black people were immune to it. And then they tried to spin it. Well, yeah, it's an airborne disease and it only attacks people with high IQs. Like, stop. Stop. <laughs> they had to, they tried to spin it. Stop. You, you think? Yeah. Yeah, they tried to spin it. You, you understand? So, yeah, you got to watch out for these folks, man. Watch out for the game. So, again, that goes back to, again, the Spanish, that whole um, improve the race stuff by whitening up. You know, that was some stuff that was in Spain for a long time. And then you got these people trying to come around us with that. No, thank you. Nah, we're good. Yeah, we good. We, yeah, don't bring all that around us. Yeah. That's why Erica Mena is in trouble now, sitting up here. Um, you let them talk. She's a lat an Afro-Latina. Erica Mena just looks like a light-skinned black girl. But again, you let them get talking. You, they'll, they'll start talking. All of a sudden, that Metalalalasa stuff start coming out. They start sounding like white supremacists. Yeah. They start talking crazy. You know, but shit, I digress, ladies and gentlemen. Anyway, more root work coming soon, family. More root work coming soon. We got some new root work scents coming out. Uh, we're about to be sold out of the vanilla root work. This root work is selling way faster than we expected. So we got some, um, we're going to come out with a whole bunch of different fragrances of it. We got to go hard body with the root work because it, it took off real heavy. In fact, the root work took off so heavy. We're sitting, we're discussing opening a store down in Atlanta. We're discussing opening a root work store down in Atlanta right now. This is how this thing is really, really popping. And we're going to have a whole bunch of different fragrances yeah, lavender, that's coming. So, yeah, we're, we're getting it popping, ladies and gentlemen. We're getting it popping. Yeah, somebody else died at Lake Lanier. Yeah, somebody else just drowned up there. Somebody else just drowned up there. Yeah, people love that root work. People absolutely love the root work deodorant, man. People love it. I'm wearing some now. It just the energy is good. Even when you wear it, not only does it smell good and feel good, it keeps you fresh and the energy is good because it has that high John the Conqueror root in it. And it's the world's only deodorant that's based on foundational black American culture. Yes, indeed. But yeah, yeah, um, we've been discussing, me and my team, opening a store down there in Atlanta, root work store down there in Atlanta. Yeah. Yeah, yeah you know what? We are going to have a, an unscented version because some people have um, been asking about that. Yeah. Oh, did Connie posted a mugshot of the guy who drowned? Oh, damn, he had a mugshot? Oh, shit. Look, I, I got to see that. Shout out to CC Freeman. I got to see that. What other scents would you guys like? Somebody said citrus. Man, I got to look that up. But anyway, man, let me get up out of here, man. Let me go see what's going on with the family. Uh, much respect to you guys, man. Go to HiddenHistoryMuseum.com. Let's make a contribution. That would be great. HiddenHistoryMuseum.com. And go to American Dash Maroon to get the film. American Maroon, if you have not seen it. And I'm going to 